Hey everyone, it's Dr. McBerry here. This week, we're really talking about emergent literacy. So we can kind of figure out what that means by how we're modifying the word literacy. We're sticking emergent on it, to emerge, to come out from. So these are like the, the, the prototypes, the precursors of what we call literacy. In fact, Saltzby in 1989 defines emergent literacy as the reading and writing behaviors that precede and develop the conventional literacies. So for most children, literacy learning, especially the precursors, well, these are the emergent literacies. And this happens before preschool and elementary school. These are activities you're picking up in the home. Um, and so that these are considerations for our schools. It is important these children can recognize that print contains meaning. Uh, they begin to recognize that they can delineate print from pictures. And it's important that they increase the number of books and texts that they read. And this is all before preschool. This is why we have programs that provide uh, books in hospitals or books in barber shops. We're trying to get books out to kids as much as possible. And so what does really the research say on this? Emergent literacy and reading research, well, much of the, this early research, it considered the role of the storybook in elementary school. And it really drew on perspectives of Rosenblatt. And that was this idea of like, they called it transactional theory. And this placed meaning making as a transaction between the reader and the text rather than like discrete and like developmental skills. Students were taught basils per se, but it was never in the sense of, you know, terms of writing or the reading. So much of the research in emergent literacy practices does draw on students' storybooks reading. So other work starting, you know, really when Vygotsky got translated in 78 and then into the 80s as sociocultural practices started to influence literacy research, um, those begin to stress the connections between dialogue and literacy and examine speech patterns between students and teachers during storybook times. Uh, Vygotsky believed that cognition derived from internalized social interactions. So you're basically having an inside conversation based on internalized conversations from the outside world. And that could, so the text was in situ and where does the text live? So you can really think about emergent literacy in that sense that you can't separate culture from learning to read. That how a culture teaches someone to read is also teaching that person that said culture back and set back and forth. Um, and looking at the, that kind of those ideas is where emergent literacy is emerging today. Whereas how do we support, you know, those overall literacy practices while building in the explicit skills that allow students to recognize that print carries meaning, uh, that it deline how they delineate print from pictures and that they can recognize more than that the print has meaning, but that they've stories and connecting those stories. So more recently, we've looked at emergent literacy and kind of writing and more than just spelling. So emergent literacy, it really helped to move the definition of writing into primary grades from just letter formation and handwriting to oral and written language relationships. And we started to think about the, the letters and stories that, that kids wrote on paper to the words that they were reading. And we began to look at students as composers of writing and their writing environments. And this really didn't happen to the early 1980s. Um, from inventive spelling to enlisting stories through dictation, we understood where these kinds of emergent literacy and writing skills happen. Piaget... The Piagetian perspectives uh, of development also really influenced the, the further studies of inventive spelling. Marie Clay in 1975 published a book like What Did I Write? And this is where we began to look at children's scribbles and we could really figure out what they're spelling or trying to say. In fact, I'm very serious when I say I find it easier to look at a student's writing to know and quickly diagnose where, what kind of support they need in phonics than doing, say, an inv inventive letter inventory to measure phonics skills because I can see how, from the way they write probably how they're reading. And that's, that's a really new phenomenon in teaching, considering that connection between reading and writing. And this is where, you know, the work of um, 
Henry and more specifically Jean Chal, who draws heavily on Piaget, is also very influential in terms of what is the sequence of how we map graphemes, phonemes, and morphemes, which are all words that we're going to learn in this class. A grapheme, um, real quickly, is just a written symbol of sound. A morpheme is the smallest symbol of language. A phoneme is a unit of sound. And all three of those can kind of together in that mixed literacy, and we'll learn more about those as the semester goes. But understanding that sequence and that development of fluency in terms of emergent literacy and their how they're mapping, that's what emergent literacy is. It's that process of mapping the sound to the grapheme. And the messiness in between, that's emergent literacy. And it takes some work at home. Um, research has shown us perspectives from anthropology began to look at like homes in emergent literacy. Uh, they stress the idea of literacy as being deeply embedded as a set of cultural practices. And we can't just think of it as a set of skills taught in uh, isolation. For example, scholars from the Library of Comparative Human Cognition in San Diego, well, they took this activity theory, which is developed by um, a Russian psychologist, Lintiev, and other Soviet psychologists, and I probably just butchered that last name, I always do when I'm filming, uh, based on the work of Vygotsky, and really applied it to literacy. And these studies examined families of marginalized communities, and they found literacy as an act that was like moderated by everyday life. And only when they really focused in on literacy instruction did the dialogue stress learning. So, so much of how we learn to make meaning just happens in our everyday life through environmental print. Uh, and the key understanding, you know, is thinking about when literacy is linguistically bound, it carries its own weight. And so it's, it, it's bound also to the acquiring culture and the way that literacy gets taught reflects and reinforces culture through the act of learning. So what are these emergent literacy skills? Again, much of the focus on emergent literacy moves away from traditional and developmental phases of discrete patterns and have emerged from research like understanding that print carries meaning. Recognizing individual words in both print and speech and having phonological awareness. Those are the three things that we would look for in a student and say that they have um, emergent literacy skills. In terms of environmental print, well, environmental print is the, that's the emergent literacy of alphabet knowledge, knowing that those letters represent sounds, um, concepts about print, how books work, and those three things about emergent literacy. Well, understanding how those develop through interactions with texts before formal school, that's environmental print. Think about all the labels, all the words, all the advertisements, the cereal boxes. I mean, we're selling things to kids before they can read. All of those kids get surrounded in signs and symbol systems. And all of those help to build emergent literacy skills. So what should emergent literacy look like in the classroom? Make connections between pictures and objects. You know, have students connect print to objects by playing matching games. Provide tactile letters such as magnet letters or letting students, you know, mess with like shaving cream letters. It's always fun. Match pictures to sounds. That's phonemic awareness. Um, have students start by making sounds of mm and ooh when you picture cows. And, and think about the shape of the, 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 wor the words that come out of their mouth even with students before they can really understand. It's just fun to feel the air. Um, Focus on environmental print. Label everything in your classroom. Hopefully in multiple languages. Students, we can learn a ton of languages, and the younger you start, the better off you will be. Vocabulary, vocabulary, vocabulary. Be explicit, even at the youngest grades. Focus on specific words each week and reinforce those words through dialogical reading and interactive read-aloud, stuff we'll learn about this semester. Utilize word walls. Play games having students find word letters around the classrooms. Build and read word books. Use songs. I mean, if you're teaching preschool, it doesn't matter how bad you are at music. You sound amazing to the kids. So you can just do anything, but you can build and use songs to build in these emergent literacy skills. Focus on concepts about print. Let kids play with books. Have libraries. Focus on key elements of concepts about print. Something else that you've had in this classroom. But basically, you just want to spread the share and love of the word. 
and let kids play, make, hack, and learn with words. And that involves the encoding, the writing, and the decoding, the reading. You can't separate the two. They need to be taught conjointly. All right, folks, that's it. See you next time.